Hey kids, my name is Lin Sengobo and I'm from Old Me High School at Mbangini. Can you please assist me with this human re reproduction question? See, we've got our question here. It says the diagram below represents the relationship between the blood system of the fetus, okay, that's the baba, and the mother, all right? The arrows indicate the direction of the blood flow in, these, in, in, in the whole process, in the blood vessels. So here's our little diagram. So what do we have? We've got blood vessel A from the mother. This is going to be, it, this blood vessel here is going back to the mother. Immediately you know that it is a vein. All right, so it will specifically, uh, oh, goodness gracious, Kathy, you know what, when you start off like this, it's because I'm trying hard not to cough and trying to focus on that. Okay, here we have the vein, uh, all right, and it is the uterine vein from the mother, and it's going to be taking blood back to the mother's heart. All right, this one here, so blood vessel B, is going to be an artery and it is the uterine artery more specifically and it is bringing the blood to the fetus so remember a for artery and a for away so if it takes blood away from the heart it is an artery if it's taking blood back to the heart it is a vein that is your main rule now, this blood space here and the sinus of the mother, that's here. Because the blood from the mother and the blood of the baby never, ever, 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 ever to come into direct contact with each other. Everything happens through the placenta. So the placenta acts as a barrier, but it also acts as a physical attachment um, to the uterus wall and the little fetus that we have here. Now, blood vessel C of the fetus this blood vessel specifically is called an umbilical vein. Okay, and there's a lot of confusion about why this is an umbilical vein. And D is the umbilical artery. When it's taking blood away from the a fetus and this blood is, is bringing this one is bringing blood to the fetus and the reason is that in here we have the little fetus's heart this blood is coming to the heart so it's entering the heart and that blood is moving away so it is the artery so that's why it's the artery and something else is there are always two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein in this umbilical cord but they've only drawn one here Alrighty, now we've got our little fetus, our little bubba. Let's give him an eye there. There he is, a little eyebrow. Okay, let's see, look at our questions. Oh, wait, 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 before we do that, I just want to show you here. Because this blood is coming from the mother, so this is from mom, from mother. Okay, this is coming from the mother's heart. It is going to be carrying nutrients. Now those nutrients are going to be glucose, amino acids, vitamins, mineral salts. You're also going to have water and you're going to have antibodies. Because the antibodies here are going to provide passive passive immunity to the embryo, at least to the fetus. So that when the fetus is born, for two or three months after that, that little baby is carrying its mother's antibodies to help it. So it is passive immunity. Remember, active immunity, you make your own, your own antibodies. Passive immunity, you're getting it from somewhere else. Okay, so, um, and then if we look here at the vein, this uterine vein, this is going to be carrying carbon dioxide and wastes. Now those wastes would be like um, urea and uric acid. Okay, so that's going back to the mom and then the mother's kidneys will filter all this rubbish out and the lungs will take the carbon dioxide out. Okay, oh wait, and we forgot oxygen. Wow, 
and oxygen because we need oxygen for this little fe little fetus to work. Okay, apart from playing a role in the diffusion of substances from the mother's blood to the fetus's blood and vice versa, state two other functions of the placenta. Okay, I already told you the placenta forms a physical attachment to the uterine wall or between the uterine wall and our little fetus. So let's do that as number one. So the first thing, it is a physical attachment between fetus and wall of uterus. Okay, um, the second thing, and this is my best one, is that the placenta secretes, now look how clever this is, it secretes progesterone, okay, from about 12 weeks. Okay, now people, do you remember what progesterone does? What does it do? Progesterone maintains the endometrium of the uterus so that it doesn't break away and the, the little embryo or the fetus isn't just miscarried. So it maintains that wall, but what it also does is it prevents the, the release of follicle stimulating hormone. So no other follicles will be produced. We don't want more follicles. We want this little embryo to grow and so that we can give birth to it. Okay, now I'm going to give you a third one here. So physically, physical attachment, that's number one. It secretes progesterone from about 12 weeks. Oh, why? Because your corpus luteum has de degenerated. Okay, um, it transfers antibodies. to the fetus for passive immunity. Um, oh, it also, another one, last one I can think of, acts as a micro filter um, for diseases pathogens, bacteria, so that they can't get to the embryo. Something else you must remember, something that's very small, like your HIV virus or um, rubella, which is German measles virus, um, alcohol, drugs, uh, what else? Um, alcohol, nicotine, all those things can go through the placenta to the baby and harm the baby. All right, just remember that, or the fetus. It, it can do that. But it's your larger structures that your microfilter of the, of the placenta will stop. Okay, next question. We have blood vessel D is an artery. So they've just confirmed what we knew anyway. Tabulate two differences between the composition of the blood found in blood vessel C and the blood vessel D. So let's just check out here quickly. Blood vessel C is the umbilical vein and blood vessel D is the umbilical artery. Okay, so let's do that. Um, we're going to draw, draw a table. Remember, you get marks for that table. Okay, I would actually do the table like this and make it very easy. Okay, so this is blood vessel C, blood vessel D, okay. Just check the D was the artery, hey? Am I right? Yeah. Okay, just so that we, don't, we remember. So this is the artery, and this is the vein. And then here, you put substances. Instead of having to write it out every single time for these two here. So, your substances, let's look at the nutrients. Okay, your nutrients would be glucose. People, I'm going to abbreviate. You mustn't abbreviate, you must write it out in an exam. Amino acids, vitamins. Mineral salts, okay, um, and we have water. Um, all of these things, you're going to have a high concentration in the vein, and you're going to have a low concentration in the artery, okay. Then we have wastes, and those wastes 
uh, urea, uric acid. Okay, we're going to have a high concentration here and a low concentration here. Okay, please write these out. You don't abbreviate like I am. I've got to get through this quick, quick. All right, you're going to have oxygen. Here you're going to have a, um, a, sorry, 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 this is a low concentration and this will be a high concentration. Here, oxygen, you're going to have a high concentration. Okay, and here you're going to have a low concentration. I'm going to scratch this out and write high here so that you don't mess it up. Okay, and then carbon dioxide. You're going to have a low concentration here in the, in the vein and you're going to have a high concentration in the artery. All right, because remember the artery is carrying all the yucky stuff away. Explain one consequence of a fetus if the blood vessel D becomes blocked. So the blood vessel D is the artery. Okay, if this becomes blocked, it's going to cause death for that bubba. Why? Um, waste products like urea and CO2 will collect in fetus body and cause death. Just think about it. If you go without oxygen, okay, or you have no oxygen, so all you're inhaling is carbon dioxide, it kills you. You die. You can only go without oxygen for a certain period of time because the carbon dioxide collects inside you and that's what hurts you. Not the lack of oxygen, it's the accumulation of the carbon dioxide. All right, and lastly, let's quickly do this last one, if the blood of the mother and the blood of the fetus comes into contact with each other, it could lead to death of the fetus. Describe why. People, the most logical one is that the mother and fetus or fetal blood types um, may not be compatible. and will harm the fetus. It could also kill the fetus, all right, because the mother is literally then allergic to this baby and her body is going to do everything. Her antibodies are going to just attack the little fetus. <laughs>